Hello, Grant. Welcome to All Ears English. I'm excited to have you here today. How's it going? It's fantastic. How are you? Excellent. Feeling great. So guys, I am excited to bring you a guest today on the All Ears English podcast. We have Grant Barrett from Away With Words. And Grant, welcome to the show. All right. Hey, it's nice to be here. Hi, everybody. Yeah, this is great. This is great. We are excited to talk about language today and linguistics. Now, Grant, you also have a co-host on Away With Words. Her name is Martha Barnett. She's not able to be here today, but we're glad to have you. And I've heard that you guys are based in San Diego, California. Is that right? That's right. Southern California, right near Mexico. Wow, California. You know, when we think about California, all these ideas come up. I have my own ideas, <laughs> and I'm sure our listeners have their own ideas. So tell us, what to you is different about the lifestyle in Southern California as opposed to anywhere else in the U.S.? Well, uh, we have Mediterranean style weather, depending on how close you are to the ocean. So we get kind of moderate temperatures year round. But if you go, say, even 40 miles inland, it can be 50 degrees hotter. So just wow. in San Diego County alone, depending on the time of the year, you might get be able to surf go skiing, go to the desert and go hiking in the mountains. That so it's is, like very different. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. I love that. I mean, when I think about California, I think about the sunshine, right? Just like yeah. how much sun you guys get is remarkable. I'm from the East coast and it tends to be cloudy a lot, but I go to California and I know I can count on those blue skies, you know, which is heaven. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, perfect. So let's get into it then today, Grant, because California has its own kind of set of language, right? Its own language set. California English. What is California English? California English is, uh, well, you know, it's interesting. It hasn't really had enough time to develop. It's kind of in its infancy, okay. California being one of the later states to become a state, mm -hmm. you know, first settled by the Spanish who basically obliterated many of the native people here. Yeah. Um, English speakers kind of showed up by the 1700s onwards, but you have even now this north south divide where the anglophones kind of mostly settle the north and the hispanophones that is people who who spoke spanish settled in the south and you will still kind of see that divide okay. so for example if you look at the names of places on a map of California, and the California is huge, mm -hmm. you will see a feature. It looks like a mountain with the top cut off. This is called in the north, it's called a butte, huh. B-U-T-T-E. Okay. Got it. Got it. But in the south, it's called a mesa, which means table in Spanish. I see. And But it's the exact same feature. It's because in the south, places tend to be named by Spanish speakers. And in the North, places tend to be named by English speakers. And so you really have this very clear North-South divide, even in the nicknames for the state. So Southern California is nicknamed as SoCal, S-O-C-A-L. Yeah. Sure. Sorry. I love that. S-O-C-A-L. And Northern California is nicknamed as NorCal, N-O-R-C-A-L. Not NoCal, not like NoCal salad dress or any or no cal so, no cal soda and so we have this kind of north south divide not in terms mm -hmm. of language but in geography and heritage and that kind of thing as well yeah um, sometimes when i go to california great it feels like i'm in two different countries between the north and the south it really does feel that way culturally yeah so that makes yeah. sense that it comes out in the language as well yeah it's an incredibly diverse state um we can talk about english and spanish as the two most spoken languages here if you come to Southern California and you speak Spanish, you can live your day-to-day -day life mostly just speaking Spanish. Right. Although I encourage you to speak English, but yeah. there are other languages too, like Farsi or Tagalog and, mm. and varieties of Vietnamese and uh, dialects of Chinese and uh, wow. just a ton of different languages here, just like a lot of the United States. But um, I should say there are other things happening in English yeah, where the vowels are changing, the okay. way that the vowels are pronounced. And they're not a big deal. And if English isn't your first language, you don't really have to worry about it. It's not that important. But I thought it would be important. It could be interesting to talk about for a second. Yeah, for, for our example, listeners, they would love that. Let, let's get into that, Grant. So this is kind of our probably second. probably know mm -hmm. the stereotypical slang word, dude. D-U-D-E, right? Of course. Right? 
Of course. Do, it means guy or man. I might, I might say, hey, dude, how's it going? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's pretty current everyday slang. But in California, some people have begun to pronounce that ooh sound in the middle as uh. So it might uh, sound a little more like dud rather dude. than dude. Okay. I'm ha- exaggerating that vowel mm-hmm. just so you can hear it more. So, so dude it- rather than dude. Okay, let me see. So is it kind of like <laughs> dude, like that kind of thing, dude, or am it's I like, doing it wrong? Well, imagine the vowel in f, uh, f, mm, good. Okay, good. So good. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That one I don't think I've actually heard. So this is specifically a Southern California way of pronouncing right. the U. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how did the other that thing we have is mm-hmm. uh, vowel changes and vowel changes happen a lot in English and all varieties of English, whether they're in the United States or Australia or the United Kingdom, mm-hmm. the vowels change over the centuries, but there's something happening here in California too. We're taking part in a vowel merger called the cot, cot merger. So the words C-O-T uh-huh. And C A U G H T mm-hmm. are starting to sound alike in the mouths of some Californians. Okay. Whereas in other parts of the country, cot and caught don't sound alike. Okay, and that's so, interesting. So for me, yeah. Grant, I'm from the Northeast. And to me, I actually pronounce them the same way caught and caught. You do. Yeah, yeah I do. But where, where are you from originally? Let me get a sense. I'm of originally where- from Missouri, but the problem is, like you, I fiddle with my language quite a, quite a bit. I, I try stuff on for and, sure. and I've lived in New York city for a long time. I've lived yep. overseas and California. So my language is no longer pure. It's a, yeah, it's it a sounds, mutt. Yeah, <laughs> it's, for sure. My language has a lot of parents now. So. Okay. Have you taken um, this on these, you know, these ways of saying different vowels? Are you starting to take them on yourself as well as you take on different, you know, regional accents? I don't accents? know. Like, yeah. you know, it's co- the cot, cot merger is one of those things that people who have it often don't know that they have it until a linguist says, you know, there's this odd thing you're doing. Interesting. And so maybe okay. one day I'll go to a linguistics conference and somebody will say, Grant, you sound like a California now. Right. Or even just, <laughs> a no, just yeah, sorry, go ahead. And then I'll have to start wearing flip-flops and, and Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> right. That is <laughs> something fish notable. tacos. <laughs> yeah. Eating fish tacos, going surfing, hanging out at the beach for yeah. sure. Okay. So we have a couple of changing, like changing around of vowel sounds is something. Mm-hmm. And then we talked about the North South divide. Is there anything mm-hmm. else important that our listeners, you know, if they're learning English, maybe they're traveling to California from Europe or from Asia that they should know about California English. Yeah. So maybe as a European, you're used to going on vacation in Spain and you're pronouncing place names in the Spanish way. Well, when you come to California, if you see a place name that looks Spanish, it might actually be pronounced an English way and not a Spanish way. Uh For example, a place that looks like Vista, V-I-S-T-A, might be pronounced Vista. Or even Mm -hmm. Los Angeles, you might hear a joking pronunciation or even in old movies, they might say Los Angeles. Well, yeah. nobody in California says Los Angeles, except as a joke. Sure. They say Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, except Spanish speakers who will say it in the Spanish way, Los Angeles. Sure. But of course, most people just say LA anyway. Right, <laughs> the right. two letters, L-A. Yeah, you know, it's um, interesting, Grant, we get this in Colorado. So I'm based in Colorado. I'm from New England, mm-hmm. but we get this a little bit in Colorado too. There's a lot of Spanish names of towns and regions. There's a town called Lyman. The Coloradans call it Lyman, but if I see it, it looks like Limon in, in Spanish. And I, I struggle so much to, like the change is quite drastic, right? If you do speak a little Spanish, it's kind of interesting how we take this pronunciation on differently. But if we don't pronounce it the local way, people won't understand where we're telling them to go. <laughs> well, so. California is undergoing what's called the re-Hispanification of its place yeah. names. As more Californians speak Spanish, both people coming here who speak Spanish as a first language and people who've already lived here learning Spanish because it's a great language to learn. It's it's an easy language to learn. It's very useful in the world. Um, place names are kind of reverting to their old original pronunciation. So it's not happening fast. Interesting. Well, who knows? Maybe someday they'll sound a little more like how they sound in Spanish and not so much like an English speaker who couldn't get it right. Sure. That's great. That's refreshing <laughs> to be honest. And I encourage more native English speakers who are not Spanish as their first language to learn that and actually pronounce it yeah. correctly because it sounds so weird to say things with a, an English accent to me. It's just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but you will sound wrong. If you, if you visit Vista, California and you call it Vista, you will be corrected by the locals 
because for now that's right, an incorrect for pronunciation. Okay. There's one it. other place name trap that I want to talk to you about. And Tell this us. is the nicknames for San Francisco. Oh. The locals don't call it Frisco and they don't usually call it San Fran. And right. so if you call it those two things, San Fran or Frisco, you'll be seen as an outsider. So, so don't do that. You can call it SF short for San Francisco or the city sometimes like if you're somewhere else in the San Francisco Bay Area Mm -hmm. you could call it I'm going to go to the city and everyone will understand you mean San Francisco City proper okay don't don't call it San Fran or Frisco okay that's important to know right because there really is you know when it comes to language there's words that make us an insider and words that immediately make us an outsider without even realizing it and there's a barrier that then becomes hard to cross right when we are an outsider Um, anything else Grant that we need to know about California English. In One more thing. You yeah. know, I was saving this for last. I'm Great. I'm having ready. a hell of a good time here. So we have to talk about <laughs> hella. <laughs> we have to. How can you do a podcast on California English without hella? Okay. What does this mean? It sounds crazy to our listeners. Yeah. Hella is an adverb that's used for emphasis. So okay. I said I was having a hell of a good time here. Hella emphasizes the good. It makes it more good, right? Yes. You can say this is a hella good taco or it's a hella gnarly wave. I mean, it's a very good wave to go surfing on. Yeah. Hella is a kind of a, a, a how should we call this? Uh, it's a condensation of the words hell of, and it comes right. from the late 1970s in mm. Berkeley, California, which is right across the San Francisco Bay from California. It started as hell of. So you used to say that's a hell of of right. a good car, H-E-L-L space O-F. Yep. Or you say, we had a hell of a good time. Yeah, And then it just kind of abbreviated to hella. Um, and it. it's a little outdated now, but I think it's okay to keep using it. People won't mind very much as long as you don't use it like every sentence, every time you speak. Cool. But you know, people in the East Coast of the United States might be thinking about the word wicked, where in Boston and the surrounding states, people use wicked in the same way that Californians use hella. I had a wicked good time. Or that's a, that's a wicked mean piece of barbecue or something. That's right. I'm actually from the center of where that came from. So I grew up in (laughs) Southern New Hampshire. Uh, That is where we say that. And I'm actually staying with my family now. And they say that naturally. I dropped that when I went to college in Virginia, (laughs) I was like, no more of this, but they still say it. (laughs) It has the same feel as, as hello though, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think hello really has kind of penetrated the mainstream in a way that people know people who are not from California, they know that Californians use that, but they would never use it themselves. It really has become this notorious phrase. That's fantastic. Uh, I love it. I love it. All right. This is great, Grant. So I feel like we've covered a lot of good stuff here. Changing of vowels, merging them, the word hella, North and South regional differences. This is so good. So Grant, tell me a little bit, tell our listeners a little bit about your podcast, because we have a lot of listeners that are learning English to learn, but also because they love words like we do. Can you tell us what you do on your show with Martha? Yeah, Away With Words is a radio show in the United States about words and language. It's a call-in show where we get callers on the air to ask us questions and we answer them. It's a fun, lively show. It's a lot like your show where it's yeah. it's casual. And we also put it out as a podcast. We get callers from all over, including other countries. Uh, they'll email us or leave a voicemail and then we'll arrange to get them on the line. So you don't have to be listening when it's broadcast in order to get on the show. And it's it's super fun. We have a really good time. We love our foreign language learners. We yep. invite them to call and don't be embarrassed if your English isn't perfect because yes. Martha and I have both learned foreign language. I learned French and Spanish and she's learned Spanish and she learned ancient Greek for heaven's sake. Oh my so gosh. We, we both know what it's like to learn another language and not be perfect at it. So if That's you're fantastic. interested, you can find out more on our website at waywardradio.org. Any spelling you can think of will probably get you there. And you can find Away With Words anywhere that you listen to your podcasts. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Grant. It's been really great chatting with you and learning a bit more about California English. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye. Take care now. Bye-bye.